This is Coogan Cassis for the Cassis and Elder Show here on Box Nation. We're at Derry Matthews Academy here for a media workout day with me. I've got very bronze, very tanned Derry Matthews. How are you? I'm okay, mate. It's the fake bacon, eh? Yeah. You know I mean? Making me look, making me look tanned, but yeah. I'm feeling good. I use it as well. I can tell, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you're on the bill, but like I said, it's kind of a little bit of a bittersweet thing for you. You should be fighting this week for a world title. You're not. How long did it take to come to terms with that? To be honest, Coogan, I thought it was a bit of a, a bit of a wind up because it was Friday the thirteenth, and I seen my manager Daniel talking to Danny, and he called me over, and I thought, oh, what, what, what's going on here? I thought it was a bit of a prank, and then he just said, listen, he's got a virus, um, and you know, it, it, the fight's not happening; it's going to happen at a later date. And then little things went through my head, and then I went home and just, I just realised and just said to myself, listen, there's, there's people, people off in the world who are, are worse off than me. There's people, you know. It was sick all over the world, and, and, and people who live in homeless and, and and stuff like that. So I just said to myself, "Gotta get on with it. Just get on, get on, get a fight." And then people were saying, "He's still going to be on the bill. We don't want you on the bill." And I just said, "Listen, I want to fight. I'm a fighter. And I've always had a dream of fighting, getting to 50 fights, and you know this is one step closer." And then, you know, it's a matter. It's a, don't get me wrong. It's, it's like one of them where do we need to take the fight? Is it risky? But I like fighting in front of my own crowd and. You know, I, I'm, I was peaking in training, so I want to let go on the opponents on Friday and then a few days off and then back over to Spain to Marbella to, to prepare the best I can. To be fair to your team and your promoter, they have quickly worked in this. Um, hopefully, like I said, it will be all right for April the 18th. If you've got another date and it's not too far away. It's next month, in fact. So there was some sort of light at the end of this tunnel for you. Yeah, there is. And there's my manager, Daniel, at, at the MGM. He's, he's, he's worked... Tremendously hard to make it happen. Jason, and Frank Warren, everyone in Frank Warren's team has, has has worked hard, you know. And it was just about believing in them, and I, I believed in them from day one since I've signed with MGM. I've been, I've, you know, I've always been given the the best opportunities, and you know, fighting, you know, for the world title, it does not come better than that. And you know, a lot of people get setbacks and and get the fights cancelled, and the fights don't ever happen. But Daniel said to me, "Listen, you'll get the fights, but I promise you, we'll get the fight." And it's happening five weeks later, so I'm over the moon. When you first heard about the news, obviously, that Abril was going to be out of the 6th of March show, did part of you think that's your big chance gone? Did, did that end your head? Yeah, I, I thought, you know, I, you know what, I, I might have missed the boat there, but, you know, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll admit it, I'm one of the lucky fighters who, who's been given a great opportunity to fight for the world title. There's most probably better fighters out there in the world who've never had the opportunity to fight for the world title. So, you know, I, I do count myself a lucky, but... You know, I've been a good servant to this this sport, and you know, I've been around boxing a long time. I'm in my 13th year as a pro, so you know, it's about time I got got something good for me. And and this year, the, the last year and this year coming is going to be you know the best two years of my life. With that April 18th date in mind, obviously, I had to reflect upon who you're going to fight. Sixth of March, you, you can't take too many risks with that ahead of yourself. So, uh, talk, talk to me about your opponent this week. I think I've got George Mitchell or Mitty Jr. Um, he's been in with Scott Harrison, Bradley Saunders, Tom Stalker, boxed him as well. He got beat by Marcelli his last fight by two rounds, you know, so everyone knows how, how tough Marcelli is and, and stuff like that. He's boxed Crawler as well. And he's done the rounds with them all, so you know, everyone's going, Oh, you know, you could get in there and get the stoppage done, but I'm just gonna listen to Danny, whatever Danny wants me to do on the night, whether it's box behind my job and win behind the job, I'll I'll do that and if I see an opening and, and uh, Danny says go for it, I'll go for it and, and you know, we, then we can plan for April. I've just got to make sure no stupid head clashes, no stupid hands injuries and, and get the job done. Is that more of a concern to you, little nicks and cuts and things like that? That's more of a concern than actually you losing the fight. I'm not saying it's a routine fight, you get into the ring, everyone's got a chance at each other, but is that more of the concern to you? I'm one of them as well, I mark up um, pretty easy as well, you know. You know, you were out in Marbella a few weeks ago, and you you seen the state of my face after sparring. So, you know, this is you know I'm gonna. I've said I had a little bit with Danny. Said every time I get it, I donate a bit of cash towards charity. So, I'm looking on going in there and just doing a, a boxing performance, not getting it at all, and and getting the win and then moving on. I think it was George Groves that used that phrase, everything for a reason. And do you kind of see that now, that April the 18th will be that reason? Things in life happen for a reason, you know. And I've always believed in that one door closes and another door opens. And it's like when Anthony Collar, the door closed for him, but one opened for me. And, and it's life, it's just part, it's part of life. And, you know, as, as I, keep, I keep going on and keep saying to people, everyone's going, oh, 
you know, you're devastated over your fight being cancelled and stuff, but it's not better. There's worse for people often all over the world, you know, people who, who aren't well, who aren't healthy, and, you know, I'm one of the lucky ones who's, who's healthy and I'm fighting for the world title. I mean, look at me, I can't even afford a new hoodie. You've got enough MGM gear, mate. Every time I see you, you've got all brand new MGM gear on. It doesn't come from them, so have a word. This oh. is I've had to have this up that made myself. So I'll speak to the gaffer, I'll speak to Daniel, I'll talk no, to Jim. Because they had all the the grey tracksuits done ridiculously tight. Me being not a ridiculously tight person, I couldn't fit into one of them. I have to get you a double XL, triple XL. I mean, the triple might have to work because I put the double on and I've done a bit of weight and been on the weights have you? Your arms are looking bigger. <laughs> Uh, but obviously, camp for you is routine. Uh, you've been out in Spain, obviously, training out there. Um, but you would have just trained as normal leading up to this build. Yeah, I've just, I'm just prepared. Like I'm, I'm, I'm still fighting for the world title. You know, um, to be honest, when I got, when I, the lads will tell you when Daniel and um, Danny told me that I weren't fighting, I was halfway through a session with Taff, and then I, I carried on with the session, and he never found out till later on in the night, and everyone was like. Why don't you tell us about the session? I said, well, I'm still fighting. I'm still fighting for the title. I'm still fighting, uh, competing in the ring. You know, and I'm, I'm fully focused on, on doing the job on Friday and then a few days on with my family, with my wife and my, and my little lad and then back out to Spain and I'm preparing again. May 2nd, will you be going out there? Um, I don't know. I've got, I'm going the end of May. I've already booted all the end of May. It's the wife's birthday, so I'm taking her for, for two weeks in Vegas. Um, and then you ain't planned that properly, ever. You should I know, have I know, but done it around that day. I can't say I'm going for the quiet one because it's a rootless in Vegas. But I know a lot of the lads out the MGM are going over, and, and a few of my mates. So it looks like I could be booking a, a ticket and just bunking in their rooms. MGM in the MGM. That's it. Well, it only makes sense. Imagine the old MGM with our MGM tops on in the MGM. We'll be getting asked where directions for places. We're like we're working there. Absolutely. Um, has the fight come a little bit too late for you, Mayweather? Yeah, I think it's four years too late. You no, know, four, good four years ago, it would have been a, a great fight. I don't mean wrong, it's still a great fight. The two, the, the two of the best fighters in the world, Mayweather, it's the best fight I've ever ever seen in, in my generation. And you know, it's it's, it's you know, it, four years ago it would have been a, a bit more. than but listen, it's, everyone's going to sit and watch it. People who don't even watch boxing are going to watch that fight. You know, you've got grannies, granddads who are going to watch the fight. All parents are going to watch it, so you know it's only good for boxing. How much of a shock would it be, or would it be a shock if Mayweather was to get beat? It wouldn't be a shock because the credential of what he's got, what Pacquiao's got, and everyone knows how good he is when he turns up. You know, you look what he done to Ricky Atten. I know what Mayweather beat Ricky Atten, but the Pacquiao beat Ricky Atten was, was phenomenal that night. And you know, but I think tactics and styles make fights, and I think people know that. You know. Mayweather style is, is uh, Pacquiao style is made for Mayweather and I've said it from day one the only person I think who can get near Mayweather is Amir Khan and people laugh at me people in my mates some of my mates laugh at me but styles make fights and the speed of Amir and the tactics he could go into the fight with, with Mayweather would be very good May 2nd we shall find out well I come to this gym uh, what six seven months ago I think yeah. it was and it looked horrendous sorry it did because yeah. it was just there was nothing in there, but now it looks absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's, it's, you know we're, we're nearly there. We've still got a few. As you see in the background, we've still got a few things we need changing. We want to take some of the walls down, get a bit of an extension going on. So I want another one or two more boxing rings. And then we're going to get a big CV room and stuff like that. We've got an amateur club now. We're all affiliated. We've got I think we've got forty kids in every night of the week. Just absolutely full in here. Forty to fifty kids in. We're, we're busy every night and. No, it's good. it's good for the community, it's good what we're doing, the culture's all in here, they're all perfect and, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm buzzing that it's, it's finally done, it's finally halfway, halfway where we want it to be. I feel a bit harsh calling it horrendous when no, I come here, it didn't, it didn't look that bad. No, you were right, because right, where, we're, where we're standing, you know, you know you were there, there were snooker tables, table tennises, it was a youth club, and we've had to take everything out, we've had to repaint it all, add more boxing rings, gloves, um, bags, Equipment and you know it looks like a proper home now. And everyone who comes in didn't expect it to be, to be this good. It's a proper gym, boxing gym. It's got a, a homely feeling to it, and you know the, the the public around the area are buzzing with it. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen, Derry Matthews. Thanks for talking to the Cassius and Helder show um, Friday night, Liverpool Echo Arena, Mersey boys. Get the job done, and then on to April the 18th. Cheers. That's that's the plan. Get the job done, and then 
Look forward to the future. Would you like to thank Al Heyman or anyone? No. For? What you done for me? <laughs> unless, unless you want to speak to me manager and make, get me a few quid. Thank you very much.